In this tutorial, we're going to look at some actual analysis based on solar orientation of these panels. Um, you can see here that we no longer have the adaptive components on our roof. If you have the adaptive components carrying over from a previous tutorial, uh, you can keep them. We're just working with the base file and Dynamo, which will create the panels on our roof. Uh, the reason why we are resetting these adaptive components is because if you're opening this file fresh and you rerun the adaptive components and you already have a set on the roof, uh, it may duplicate your adaptive components, which could cause some issues. So we're just going to start for safekeeping with an empty roof. And you can see here we have referenced our original Excel file. And this is the same process that we used in an original tutorial, uh, which will array adaptive components on our roof. So I'll hit run. And you can see that it caused an issue here. So I need to copy and paste this drop down menu. It's just a minor glitch in the program. I'll delete the previous one. And let's hit run. OK, so we have our adaptive components on the roof. Uh, they're at two meters thick at the moment. So let's select one, right click, hit select all instances, visible in view. Let's just make it more realistic. I want to see what they look like when they're flat. So I'm going to change that extrusion to zero. OK, so these are some more realistic roof panels. We can see the panelization of the surface at this point. So I'm going to turn on the sun and rev it. I'm going to zoom out for a moment. And let's hit sun path on. I'm going to say, let's use the current location. You can see we have our sun path on now. We, nice, we also have some nice shadows. If I go to the south side, we can see how the sun is oriented. I can move the sun and rev it. Oops. I'm going to select the sun and move it. So you can move it to different times. That's a little too late. I'm going to put it at 1245 for now. If I click on the sun settings up here, I can actually choose a specific time of day. Uh, we can choose a specific time of year as well. So we're going to analyze the panels on our roof for a particular time of day and year. Let's start with the summer solstice at noon. This should be straightforward enough. So our sun should be directly above us in the sky. And we have our panels, and you can judge by the geometry that we're going to be getting a lot of light here and not so much light on the north side. So there's a great tool in Dynamo, which if I go to the search bar and type in sun, I'm actually going to use the sun path direction. So this will essentially give me a vector representing where the sun is in relation to a target element. And all I have to do is click this button, and it says use sun path from current view. So it's referencing whatever the setting is in this view. We're not going to check run automatically, but if it were checked, as we move the sun and rev it, this direction will update, which is a pretty nice feature. Now there are other solar uh, analyses we can do. If I type in solar here, I'm sorry, let's type in daylight. There is a range of uh, daylight analysis we can do. We can um, go to Analyze. We have daylighting. There's a wide range. We're not going to focus on those in this course. Uh, in this example, we're just going to take the sun vector and reference the solar panels in relation to it. So we have our vector as an output, and we also have our surfaces. I'm going to try to find a way to evaluate these surfaces to find their surface normals. So I'll likely find this under Geometry for Dynamo Geometry. Let's scroll down to surface, and let's try an action. So what I want to find is something like a normal of the surface. So you can see I can do normal at parameter and normal at point. I'm going to go with normal at parameter. It'll be easy for me to find the midpoint of each surface. And in order to visualize this, let's pull up a point at parameter as well. So you can see normal at parameter and point at parameter give us the same inputs. And we'll be able to compare the outputs and see what the differences are. If I hit Control-G in Dynamo, 
I'm going to right click and hit zoom to fit so we can see our surfaces. I'm going to hit control G to go back to the node space. You can see we can see the uh, points here. I'm going to turn off our transpose here by turning off the preview. You can see we have a lot of options here. So let's right click, list create, and unclick preview upstream and also do that for these four panels. We just don't want to see these points at the moment. Seems like we have one residual point. Here we go, I'm going to turn off preview here. So now we just have the surfaces and we're going to evaluate these surfaces at a parameter. So I'm going to move these to the right and plug our surface into the surface input. Let's open up our library and pull up a number, dropping that onto the canvas. If I evaluate the surface at a U value of 0 and a V value of 1, let's see what our point is. Here's our point for this plane. Here's our point for a corresponding one. You can see this is the start point of how the surface is generated. These are U and V values asking for values between 0 and 1. If I move these to 0.5, this will be in the center point of each surface. So we drop this point onto the canvas in order to visualize where exactly we're evaluating the normal of the surface. But if I plug 0.5 into U and V for our normal parameter and our surface into the input, this will give us the vector that is perpendicular to the panel at this point. So here we have a vector. We have the x, y, and z. I'll close out of this output. So we have our sun path direction and our normal at parameter. I'm just going to do a quick test here since we have all of these roof panels uh, with the same orientation in the z. I'm going to do a dot product with these vectors. So this is a quick way of evaluating whether the sun is parallel or perpendicular and at what level of perpendicularity the sun is to the surface. So this normal will be our vector input. Our sun will be our second vector input. And I'll hit run. And the dot product has simplified my outputs. You can see I have a range here. It's giving me a range which will generally be from 0 to 1 in this case. If we had downward facing panels, we could have dot products from a negative 1 to 1, but here we have a basic case from 0 to 1, which will be fine with us. And since these are all pretty upward facing, we don't have anything significantly low. So now that we have numbers, we've converted our solar path into a system of numbers related to the panel's orientation, we want to color our adaptive components based on this dot product. So in the same way we have with the images, we're going to pull up a color range, drop that onto the canvas, and let's also pull up a remap range, I'm dropping that onto the canvas. I'm going to put this aside for now, but we'll use that in a moment. We also need to create colors, so I'm going to type in color, create by ARGB, and we need to create these sliders with these colors with values, so I'll add a slider. So we're just adding a bunch of nodes here to get rolling, and I'll minimize the library. Let's maximize Dynamo. And I'm going to hit Control G and zoom to fit our surfaces. Hit Control G again. So let's go from red to green. I'm going to change the domain from 0 to 255. And well, let's go from green to red. We're going to start with lower values. And then the values more situated towards the sun will be redder. So I'm going to clear that green and plug into red, and we'll change this to 255 for each slider. So we have our two colors. I'm going to plug the red into start and the green into end. 
And this is based off of values between 0 and 1. So I'll plug our dot product into the value. And let's pull up a watch node. Make sure everything's working. I'll plug our color into watch and hit run. So it seems to be giving us what we want. We have a range of colors that are based on the panel's orientation to the sun. The last thing we want to do is override the color in our view. So here's our list of colors. We'll plug that into color. And all the way back here in our, in our graph, we have an adaptive component output. That's the element that we're going to change in Revit. So let's go to split screen again. And with this set up, I'm going to hit run. So now we've overridden these colors in the view. You can see a subtle change in the orientation of the panels related to the sun, but it's not quite clear. We're pretty much ranging from orange to red. And the reason is because the dot product, although dot products will give you a value from 0 to 1, most of these panels are oriented upwards. So we actually want to exaggerate the differences in this dot product. And we're going to use this remap range node to map these numbers to a value between 0 and 1 so that it fills this gradient. This is just trying to give us a qualitative view of which panels are more oriented towards the sun. So these will be our numbers. I'll plug the dot product into our numbers input. I'll clear the search bar here and choose a number. Our new min will be 0 and our new max will be 1. And I'll plug this new value into our color range value input. So hitting run, we should see a more articulated gradient. So we have a nice little gradient here, which is showing the point in time and the panel's orientation towards the sun. And you can see what we did there. If we have a dot product and we've remapped that to 0 and 1, we have more of a range of our numbers, although they're still related in the same way. We've mapped it from what seems to be 0.7 to 1 or so to a range of 0 to 1, and that's affected our color range. Now I'm going to zoom out, and let's see what happens. I'm going to zoom in here to our sun path diagram, or sorry, our sun path direction. And I can hit this, and it'll update to the current view. If I move this sun in Revit to 2.30 PM, I'm going to hit this value, and that's going to update. And now I'll hit run to update the calculation. We should see the gradient favor this side. That's a nice little tool, uh, just a quick way to visualize orientation towards the sun. I can change these sun settings to times of interest in the year. Let's say spring equinox at 3 p.m. is an important time to study. That's when we're really getting beamed. So this facade is going to come into the, some issues, likely. Uh, the roof, not so much. Let's hit run. So you can see our roof gradient has changed significantly based on uh, the sun angle. So this is just a basic example showing us how our roof panels are oriented towards the sun at given times of the year. Uh, not very rigorous environmental simulation, but it is some basic analysis that makes these tools uh, much more available to the user, and it allows Revit users to customize documentation sets much more easily.